Hi, and welcome to this new video on how to access your GitHub account more securely with UBK. If you care a lot about your security, you probably have some sort of much more secure way to access your account, like a security key. In this video, I'll show you how you can use YubiKey to have a much more secure experience in logging into your GitHub repository. Unfortunately, if you use Azure DevOps, this kind of SSH key is not still supported on the um, Azure DevOps account, so it is working only on GitHub. And you start by creating a key using a really different connection, a really different command line. So you are using HEDSA as key, key and resident. And this option allows you to use a key that got signed with your YubiKey. So you can simply use this option and you need to previously have a pin on your key and it is probably already done by the YubiKey manager or if you are using your YubiKey with Microsoft account or with Google account, you were already prompt to create a pin. If you don't have a pin, create a pin for your YubiKey. But my problem is that I got this error. And after Googling a little bit, I didn't find a lot of information, but sadly enough, I'm using my Windows system, not with an administrator user. So my Alcam user is not an administrator of this machine, and that's make probably this process fail. So the only drawback in Windows in using this method at the date of today is that you need to launch your Git for Windows with administrator write with the USC. So you right click and run at administrator your Git bash. As I told you before, now I am, uh, I've launched Git bash with the root user that ironically is my administrator account on Windows because I verified that for some reason I'm not able to access my YubiKey if I'm not an administrator, if I have the UAC kick it in. So I can now try again, sorry, past my command and it's, uh, and, and I call it um, uh, Yubi because it's my YubiKey. And these options are different from the standard SSH key gen because it's asking to use a key that can be backed up by a FIDO2 authentication key, physical key. So when I press enter, I'm asked to enter the pin. And remember, you need to have a valid pin set into your YubiKey or it does not work. So you can use your YubiKey manager to set up the key, or you can simply try to set up, if you already set up your YubiKey with a Microsoft account, with a Google account, you are already prompted by Windows usually to create a pin. When I press enter, I see my YubiKey flashing requiring me to touch the key. Now that I've touched the key, it asks me where to save my key and I can leave the default option. It asks me to override the key because I've already done this as an example. So I'm actually overriding for this example. And I can leave my passphrase empty because the key it was saved, was um, protected with my YubiKey. And if I'm going to my SSH folder, I see my two keys. So I can just cut the ID public key, okay, it is simple text, I can copy, and then you need to go to your um, user account settings and go to the access part where you have SSH and GPG key, and now I have no SSH key, I've previously removed my SSH for this account, and I insert a new SSH and I call it UB, and I'm simply passed the content of my public key and I'm ready to go. Now I can come back to my root folder. I can change the folder, uh, use a temporary folder where I want to try to clone a private repository of my account so I'm able to understand if my SSH work. So I take a private repository, I press the code clone locally and 
be sure to use the SSH option, not the HTTPS, the SSH. You can copy your key and then you can issue your standard git clone and here you are. Okay, the first time you connect with SSH, as you saw before in the previous video, the server is asking you, are you ready to accept this key? Do you really trust this key to be of the key of github.com? Oh, you can check your GitHub SSH key fingerprint. It has a doc, but you can um, usually simply take your key, copy, go to Google and search for the key. And as you can see, these indeed are the GitHub SSH key fingerprint. So yeah. I'm really talking to github.com. I have no man in the middle. So the server is who the server claimed to be. So I can press yes. And now it asks me to confirm user's presence. User presence means that my YubiKey is flashing, so I can touch my YubiKey for accessing the server. And here you are. I've cloned my repository and I can issue a git fetch and it asked me to touch my YubiKey again. So I can use my key. So that's really cool because now I don't need to have um, some credential manager to store my password to avoid to typing me, to typing the SSH password each time I'm going to connect to the server. This time, each time I'm going to connect to the server, it is simply asking me to touch my YubiKey so it can really verify that I indeed have the key. Now, let's see what's happened if I use a different YubiKey. So I um, plug in, plug it in another YubiKey and I'm going to issue a git fetch and I confirm user presence. And it tells me that I have an invalid format because it, it, it is another YubiKey. So actually you need to understand that this kind of key is bounded to your, a single YubiKey. But clearly if you have more than one YubiKey, you can generate um, a different SSH key for another YubiKey, another physical YubiKey, but usually it is not needed. The important thing is if you lose your YubiKey, you should remove your public key from every server just to avoid that the user could have stolen, someone can have stolen your YubiKey and also have the access to your private file. But actually you have a nice private key and your local private key is backed up by YubiKey so you can simply um, log into your server with, with a touch of your finger. The only drawback of this approach is in Windows, you need to use the git for Windows, the git bash. So you cannot use your standard PowerShell Windows because PowerShell has an has still at the date of today, an old version of SSH keygen and SSH protocol. So it does not support your YubiKey and you need to use bash, the git bash for Windows. If you are in Linux, you have usually no problem if you just update your, your SSH distribution. And in Windows, you also need to launch the Git Bash as an administrator. And I'm usually uh, use all of my software as a standard user, not an administrator. So it can be a, real, a little bit annoying. And I don't know if it, this is a limitation of my installation of my server, but if I'm trying to use the bash with a standard user, it just fail. And the other drawback is if you are heavily using virtual machine like, um, like I use and you are using Hyper-V, there is no way to uh, share your USB YubiKey to be accessed from your from your virtual machine, so you cannot use the Fido2 authentication inside your virtual machine. And it is 
possible if you use a different type of virtualization system like VMware Workstation, because these are uh, virtualization system made to virtualize um, system not in a server environment, but in a client environment. So they have a um, standard way of sharing the USB hardware to the virtual machine. And if you really want to use a YubiKey in your um, virtual machine and you want to have a little bit more security, you can always use a little trick. If you launch your YubiKey manager, you can go into the application OTP section and here you have an option to configure the slot one and the slot two. When you buy your YubiKey, your slot one is ready configured and you can you should avoid to touch it. But the long touch slot two is not configured. The long touch means what the YubiKey does if you press your YubiKey for more than four seconds. And you can configure and you have four options. The standard Yubico, one-time password, a challenge response, and OAuth HOTP or a static password. And actually, I've configured my second slot with a long password. If you can generate a password that is really strong and you can generate a password that has almost 250 bits of entropy, so it's really secure, this password is stored inside your YubiKey. So you can always long press your YubiKey and it will act like a keyboard and it will start it will start typing the password and pressing enter at the end of the password. So you can use your YubiKey really strong secured password because you generate random number of char with the maximum entropy you store into your YubiKey. So you can use a standard SSH um, key gen to generate an RSA key. And when you are prompt with a passphrase, instead of using a passphrase that you can remember, you can simply long press your YubiKey, long press your YubiKey again to confirm the password and you are ready to go. With that configuration, you can also disable the all your agents that are supposed to store your, air, your SSH key password to avoid you typing the password each time because you can simply issue a git fetch. You were prompted each time for the password of your SSH key, but you can simply long press your YubiKey and wait for the password to be automatically typed. And that's the the best way I found to use my YubiKey onto my virtual machine to have a little more secure SSH key because instead of having a password that I can remember that I or, or that I can be able to type, I have my password in my YubiKey. As a final touch, even if you don't have a physical YubiKey, when you generate your SSH key into your machine, instead of using a password that you can remember, you can always use any credential manager you want, like Kepas, you can generate a really, really strong key, store the key inside your um, password manager, and Every password manager has the option of typing password, emulating the keyboard. So instead of having your physical YubiKey key, key and touch your YubiKey key, you can simply use a password manager. And when you are prompt for an RSA password for your key, you can just ask your password manager to type the password for you. In this way, you have an RSA private key that is protected by a strong password. And so you can be a little bit more secure that if for some reason that key gets stolen, the attacker is not able to decrypt to find the real private key. Thanks for watching and I wait you in the next video.